In this project we'll be making a simple bell rope, lanyard or light pull. We'll start with a Matthew Walker knot at the top, then a diamond knot, followed by a different variation of a diamond knot, and we finish it off with a foot rope knot. I'm using white cord here for demonstration purposes because it, look, it shows up better than yellow. I've taken four meters of cord, cut it in half so that I've got two lots of two meters, doubled the ends over to form two loops as shown, and secured them with a rubber band. Ultimately you won't need a rubber band, but in the early stages it does help you secure things. So, let's start our Matthew Walker knot. I'm going to form a loop with one of the leads. Any lead will do to start with. And I'll take the end of that lead around the back and feed it back up through the loop that I formed. Go to the next lead, which is this one. Form another loop similar to the first one but hold it underneath the first one that we formed underneath as shown in the video there. Take the end of that around the back and up through the two loops that we formed. And You may notice there's a slight kink in the line there so gently tease that out. Take the next lead in line, form another loop, and yes, we've got to hold it underneath the previous one. And I'm keeping things fairly slack at the moment because ultimately I'll have four loops with four leads going through them, so I need room to manoeuvre. Take that lead round the back and up through the three loops that we'd formed. And I have one left. Here it is. I've got to form my final loop and hold it again underneath the previous one so it's on the bottom of four now because this is the final one. Take the lead around the back and back through the four loops. You can see why I've kept things slack because that gap in the middle there is now getting quite small and I've got another kink so let's gently tease that out by just twisting the line as we pull it through. Yep, there we go. It's not looking much like a Matthew Walker knot just yet, but it will as we tighten things up. Now the last loop I formed, I've got to tighten that up just a fraction, not too much, just a little bit. The secret of all decorative rope work is patience. Take the previous lead and loop and tighten that up a little bit. If we try to tighten things too quickly we can easily lose the structure of the knot so patience really is a virtue here and we keep going back to each previous lead and loop and just tighten up a little bit at a time and we keep going round and round and it does help, particularly with a knot like this, to have a look at the final knot so that we can keep an eye on the structure of the one that we're tying now. Just keep going back and tightening ever so slightly, just a bit at a time. Keep going round and round to the previous one. And I think we can now see that it's starting to form. Yeah, that structure is there. And the previous one. Now if you look carefully, we're in danger here of losing the structure if we're not careful. So make sure that this loop is laid under the one it's supposed to be underneath. Have a look at the finished article just to make sure that you've got the structure right. And there we go. That, that structure is looking fairly good now. And all we need to do is tighten bit at a time and when we've finally got the knot tied we can dispose with the rubber band because we no longer need it. So just gently does it bit at a time, 
tighten one at a time and our bell rope is well and truly started with a Matthew Walker knot. Here's our bell rope and we're going to look at the second of the four knots we need to tie to construct this bell rope. It looks quite complicated but it's a very satisfying and nice looking knot once you know how to do it. So let's give it a bash. Yet again I've used a rubber band to secure the four leads and I'm going to hold the bell rope upside down and form four loops as shown in the video. Already I know you're starting to panic but let's hold these together with another rubber band then we can see what we're doing and not be afraid of losing the knot. I'm going to take one lead and pass it over the lead next to it and through the next loop. For those of you that have done the course you will understand this a lot more than those that are trying to do it from scratch. I'll take the next lead pass it over the one next to it and through the loop. And the next one, pass it over the next lead, this one here, and through the next loop. Take the kinks out don't know why we should take the kinks out, they're a fine band for those of you old enough to remember them and finally the last lead there should only be one loop left so pass it over the next lead and through the remaining loop like so and already you can see the shape of a diamond knot there already and the original rubber band we used to hold things together we can now get rid of that. Let's unwind it so that we can use it again rather than cut it. There we go. We do still have a rubber band right in the middle there. We'll have to cut that out eventually. But there's our knot structure and we need to tighten these up just a little bit. I know with the Matthew Walker knot we kept things fairly loose to start with and we still need to keep this one fairly loose but not so loose as we can't see what uh, the structure is so gently one at a time just tease these through until our knot looks a bit tighter but we can still see it's a diamond knot there we're getting close to what we want now We now have four leads coming through the top and if we look carefully each one should lay against a loop over the top and what we want to do with each lead 
is keep it underneath the one next to it. You need to look at the video to see what I mean here. So four leads each underneath the one next to it and I'm pointing at the rubber band there that's now going to get in the way so we need to cut that out we can't actually pull that out because it's stuck right in the middle of the knot so let's get rid of that I'm afraid that's some wastage but ultimately as I said once before rubber bands help in the early stages because it holds things together but with a bit of practice you won't need these so back to our four leads look at the four leads coming out of the top and tighten it up just a little bit so that it's not too loose we, we need to be able to see all our leads reasonably close to each other yet again we tighten ever so slowly one lead at a time and there we go and yes we can still see that's a diamond shape isn't it so we, we know we're on the right tracks okay take a lead and make sure it goes underneath the one next to it and make sure we do that with all four as shown in the video take a lead and follow it follow the lead next to it follow it through where the lead next to it goes under something make sure this lead goes under and take the kinks out again and the next one make sure it goes under the lead next to it and follow the follow that through underneath tease the kink out two to go follow the lead next to it, go underneath and under the next lead. Just just follow the lead through that you're uh, next to. One left and there we go. We're well on the way now. It gets easier, trust me. and I'm just going to tighten things up a little bit more now keep the structure of the knot but let's not make it too tight yet because those leads that are pointing towards the top of the bell rope effectively need to go in the other direction so we need some room to manoeuvre still we'll tighten it up later but there we go we've got four leads pointing down now now here comes what might be considered the tricky bit let's take one of the leads and it's come underneath the lead next to it let's not forget so we're now going to go over two and under two leads Can you see what I mean there so over two and under two and bring it right up through the middle so here we go see there we've gone one two one two so over two under two right up through the middle we're going to do that four times once for each lead take the next one there we go we've got to go up at one two make a little hole using my pliers here to just emphasize where the hole is so over one two and under two and right up through the middle We are and the next one one two one two so over two under two and right through the middle again that's three out of four done nearly there one left 
over 1, 2 and under 2. Use my pliers to force the hole to put it through. 1, 2, over 2, under 2 and there we go. We've got the structure of the knot. Now then, this is going to take a little while to tighten, but we've certainly got the structure there, haven't we? We need to tighten this one slowly, bit at a time. It's quite a complicated knot, so a little bit at a time, otherwise we'll get the bell rope out of kilter. We need to keep it straight, the whole thing. So there we go, that, that's looking pretty close, but be patient. Tighten it up very slowly, bit at a time, and you will finish up with this. And once you get that right, you can feel pretty proud of yourself. It does take some practice, this one, but it's well worth it. Run our third of four knots to construct our bell rope, and this is a variation of the diamond knot we just tied. And in fact, this diamond knot is easier than the previous one, so if you manage to tie the previous diamond knot, you will find this one an absolute doddle. You recall with the previous diamond knot, we got to this stage. If you haven't done the previous diamond knot, then go and watch that video and get yourself to this stage. We had four leads coming through the top here. Now this time instead of going underneath the adjacent lead as we did with the previous diamond knot, we're going to go over the top. You need to look at the video to see what I mean here. Follow the adjacent lead over the top. Here's the first one now. Follow it through. There we go. Stage one. Take the next lead, follow it over the top or towards the centre if you like. Follow that lead through. That's two out of four done. The next one over the top, follow it through. One left over the top, follow the adjacent lead through, and the hard work is done, if we can call it hard work. Now let's tighten it up a little bit, not too tight, just so that we can see the structure of the knot we'll tighten it up properly when we've got those leads followed through. Yeah, it's looking a bit loose, so just tighten it a fraction, like so. This is such an easy knot compared to the previous one, and for each of those four leads we just follow the adjacent lead through. We've gone over the top, we stay over the top, let's follow it through and it'll come up right through the middle. And the next one just follow the lead next to it. Quite simple really. That's two done. And the next one, number three. Follow the lead through, right through the middle. Use the pliers to force the hole. Three. Aha! Deliberate mistake. 
we've already done three and we see this one doesn't follow the same pattern we've actually got this one just a little bit wrong so let's undo that blue beta badge to all those who spotted that deliberate mistake we've got to follow the lead next to it and this is what we're going to do now up through the middle and basically that's it what we need to do now is just tighten things up again we do it slowly bit at a time and we finish up with this not bad three out of four done Now we're going to look at the final knot on our bell rope, foot rope knot. It is a bit tricky the first time you try this. You, you may need to practice it one or two times, but once you've cracked it, you'll wonder what all the fuss was about. So, let's have a look at it. There's my faithful rubber band again to hold things together. I'm holding the bell rope upside down to get started and I'm going to tie a crown knot that's just passing one lead over the lead next to it and I'm doing this in a clockwise direction you could do it in an anti-clockwise direction but you need to remember which way you started this knot because it helps later on when we get to tighten things up so a clockwise crown knot with the bell rope upside down I'm going to turn the whole thing over and tie another crown knot. And again, I've got to tie this in a clockwise direction. Spread the leads out so that we can see what we're doing. Another crown knot, clockwise direction. And very shortly, I'm going to switch to another video where I've used stiffer cord. Stiffer cord isn't always easy to work with when you're making bell ropes but the cord I've used for demonstration purposes is sufficiently stiff to hold the structure together so it's easy to demonstrate and see what I'm doing. So we've tied our two crown knots and we should have something like this or hopefully exactly like this. Now each lead at the bottom I'm going to pass through a loop at the top but you can see the loop just above this cord that I'm pointing at now. We're not going to go through that one. We're going to skip over another lead first and put it through the next loop. You need to study the video carefully here just to make sure that you're putting it through the right loop. And of course, once you've fed one through, the rest are easier because we just take each lead in turn and find the next loop in turn. There's the next available loop. It's got to be fed through there. Now the third one through the next loop and one lead and one loop left. Here's our lead and here's the remaining loop at the top. we now have four leads coming up through the middle and you should find that these leads will quite nicely fall against adjacent leads as shown in the video and the leads that we've got to be working with make sure they're towards the centre of the knot as shown and each of those leads we've got to follow that adjacent lead downwards and we've got to go under two 
Now we've gone under 1 there. We want to go under 2. There's the second one. And when we get to the bottom, we'll find that that lead now lies underneath another lead. So we've got to do that with all four. Follow the lead it's lying next to, go under 2 to the bottom. One, two, and again at the bottom you'll find it's laid underneath another lead which we'll follow round shortly. And the third one, let's follow the lead through and under two, like so. Make sure that lead at the top is at the centre of the knot. And the final lead follow the one next to it, go under two to the bottom. I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit, try to keep it even. And now what we're going to do is again follow the adjacent lead. Where that goes under something we'll go under, when it goes over we'll go over. And let's just tighten that up a little bit. So we've got to follow that lead through, and when we get to the top, we've got to push it up through the middle. Let's go back to our main bell rope now, and we've got to take the leads from the top, follow the adjacent lead, under two, and down to the bottom, as we saw with the stiffer cord that I demonstrated with. And at the bottom, yes, it's laid under an adjacent lead. Now this video does go on a bit, but it's quite a tricky knot, so it, it doesn't do any harm to look at things more than once. Let's follow that, that lead down under two. Like so. third lead, follow the adjacent lead down and under two again. I've got to use my pliers this time to make that hole a bit bigger. It can take a bit of practice knowing just how much to tighten a knot up while you're working on it. You want to try and keep the structure together but you don't want to make it so tight that you can't actually finish the knot off. And something else that needs practice as well is getting used to how much cord you will need because there's nothing worse than getting right near the end of the knot, the end of the bell rope, and finding that you've run out. So be quite liberal to start with until you get used to how much cord you need. There we go, four leads all through the bottom. And what we've got to do now is our four leads, we've got to follow adjacent leads again, follow them upwards this time, and where the adjacent lead goes under something, we'll go under. When it goes over something, we'll go over. We're just following the lead round. And when we get to the top, we've just got to pull it up through the middle. One down, three to go. Here's the next one, follow the lead next to it. And it started underneath, so keep it underneath, like that. Round to the top, and when we reach the top, up through the middle. Proving a tricky one, this one. Gotcha. And the third one. Follow the lead. And at the top, up through the middle. One 
left. There we go, we've, we've done all the hard work now. All we need to do is tighten that up. When we tighten this up, we want to make sure that we're tightening the right things up. We don't want to start pulling on these leads that led up to the knot. And this is where we need to remember which way we tied the knot in the first place. We don't want to stretch those underneath. Now, when you look at this knot, you'll see a number of loops in the middle. Now I've started tightening there, I will point out these loops in a second. And we started tying our crown knots clockwise, didn't we? Now if we look at the side of the knot here, there are four loops in the middle. You see the one I'm pulling at now? I'm pulling that anti-clockwise. And there's another loop, pull that anti-clockwise, i.e. the opposite way to the way we tied our crown knots to start with and there are four of those loops. You need to look at the video carefully to see which ones I mean. And now we just pull our leads through and you'll find this quite easy once you've got used to this knot. Uh, to start with you will need to look carefully to see where the leads actually go. And the rule as always is to tighten a little bit at a time, don't rush it. There's that inner loop again, pull that anti-clockwise tie it bit at a time, one lead at a time, and slowly, slowly your knot will come together and it will stay even then. And there we go, we've got our knot, our foot rope knot to finish the bell rope with. We might think of tightening that up a bit more. Those leads that stick out at the end, you could pick them apart, dip them in boiling water and comb them with a metal comb to make a tassel. But I actually prefer to cut those ends off and I'm cutting them as close as I can to the last knot without cutting the knot because we don't want to ruin that now do we? And the four leads that I've just cut I can poke back down through the middle. I'm using my pliers. You could use a blunt instrument, instrument that would probably work better. And when you've pushed them down in the middle, you can squeeze the ends with your pliers like this and hide those. And there we go. There's our finished article. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed putting it together. Good luck.